I ain't worried about following no trends, man. I just want to speak the truth. It got it a pen, pen one of the past. Never tied to the ink. I'm creating the path. Never tied to the mind, mind into the booth. Voice on the track. Now you hearing the truth. We're on episode 23 of Gem Radio, and we have our first guest of 2018. He's been in the game for a while. He's a young Bayonne hip hop legend. And he's finally dropping a project that I've been waiting for for some time called Against the Grain, produced by Wu Tang Clan affiliate, Fourth Disciple. We had Biz the Prince on the show, man. How you doing, sir? Yes, sir. It was good, man. Everything is good, man. Bless. Thank yo, yo, so, man, it's been a long road. Like, you know, you dropped Break the Walls. Um, almost two years ago he was about to drop an ep called back to basics and you had like, even had a short documentary for this project in particular what took so long to finally have this project finally come out well what happened is you know fourth um fourth is a busy dude mm -hmm. and um he had some things he had to handle like with his business and stuff you know in the business and you know he had some things in the past he needed to tighten up between him and woo and you know i guess the labels he was dealing with back then and then i had my own things you know what i mean that i was dealing with so what i did was the time that we had in between where we had that little break that's when i was like you know what i'm gonna just go back to the basics of you know heating up the streets and that's when i started doing a bunch of songs with local artists like you know louis ave and, and mo stacks and you know people around the way just to stay active you know what i mean Word. So, like, right now, the EP is now called Against the Grain. So, what significance does that title hold to you? And I know, like, you and Fourth been working together for a long time since. We're going to get into that question a little bit later. But, yeah. um, but you know, like, what's the significance of this title to you right now? Um, I think right now, the, the way the game is, um, I feel like every three years, the sound changes. You see what I'm saying? And, um... Mm -hmm it's pretty much against the grain of like what's what the dominant sound is right now with hip hop. You feel what I'm saying? And I felt like, you know, we need to take a risk on that. But in the same breath, like we ain't wanted to make it sound like a super old, like 96 project to where it's like nah. um, outdated. You know what I mean? Like we wanted to bridge the gap to where, you know, we, we bring in that sound, but it's still, you know, new for the young dudes. So like the younger audience could, um, could rock with it. You feel what I'm saying? Word, so word. yeah, that's the yeah the whole against the grain. That's what that's about. It's pretty much against the grain of, you know, um, the sound, what's popping, the content, everything. You know what I mean? It's a lot of storytelling yeah, on this EP. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a lot of raw lyrics. You know, it's word. boom bap. You know what I mean? It's no trap. It's boom bap, and you know, just trying to bring that sound back. So now let's take it back to like the Prince of the City days because you've been doing this shit for a while. You've worked with the likes of Freeway, Q for 112, and you've worked with K-Slay. How is it like to work with these guys and um, have you learned anything during that time? Oh man, yeah, I learned a, I learned a bunch of stuff from them. Um, my relationship with Q and Free, oh, K-Slay too, I'll say all three of them. It's more so like, it's, we're like brothers, you know what I mean? Like when I'm around free and then we don't even talk about music, you know what I mean? We're just talking about life things. You know, um, what I learned from them is being on the road and how to maneuver on the road. You see what I'm saying? Because um, a lot of times when I was out with Free or Q, we was on the road doing shows, you know what I mean? So they taught me a lot about, you know, how to deal with promoters and how to, you know, you know, just the whole road life, you know, I learned a lot. And um, what does Miami mean to you? Oh, that's like my second home, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's like my second home. Um, and it, it was kind of like an accident. What happened with Miami was we went down there for Memorial Day weekend. It was just only supposed to be a week. And um, I had a record called Drop It Down. So my manager at the time, um, Shabazz the OG, he's actually like pretty big on Instagram now. Um, he'd be with like Floyd Mayweather, Diddy, a whole bunch of people. But um, at the time we had, he had went down there a couple of days before and just set some things up with some DJs, some clubs. He was like, yo, when you come down here for Memorial Day weekend, we got some shows and stuff lined up. You know, we're just gonna work the record and then pretty much go back up to Jersey. Right. The record wound up popping. Like it, it, it wound up popping. And then one week turned into two and then a month. And then next thing you know, I was back and forth down there for about 15 months. You know, Damn. yeah, and I, I built a lot of relationships. You know what I mean? Um, shout out to the whole ATP, um, YS Cutter Man. Um, I met Sam. Sam Sneak was one of the first people that played Drop It Down. 
This was before he was um, Maybach Music's official DJ. He's Ross's official DJ now. But, um, Sam Sneak, um, Big Will, rest in peace of Big Will. He used to be signed to Def Jam. Just, I, I met a lot of good people down there in Miami. Word. So, you know, you've worked with Fourth Disciple during those days. During the You did some records with him on Prince of the City as well. And um, you had these affiliations for a while for these new artists that haven't yet broke the ceiling. You know, in terms of knowing what to go about their career, do you have any like advice that you can give to these people? Yes. Um, they they have a luxury that I didn't have. You know what I mean? Like you know, I when I came in, it was still like you had to press up CDs and face to face and and pass them out and that the whole hand to hand grind. It wasn't no SoundCloud, none of that stuff. So nowadays, where you got these these kids that can pretty much upload and record at a rapid pace and do it on their own, you know, I would just say, before you start putting music out, understand what you want to do. Like, what angle do you want to go? You know what I mean? You could do it on your own. Um, you could try to get a deal. You know, it, it's, it's just so many different ways. I think a lot of new artists, they just start recording music and putting it out and they don't really uh, they don't really know what they want to do so i think you should get a solid concrete plan down first before you start you know pursuing your career or and uh, you've been working with fourth disciple for a while like you know he's a wu-tang playing affiliate so has there any been any jewels that he's dropped on you that resonates with you to this day oh uh, yeah independent bro um being <laughs> independent <laughs> I know you can relate to that. I, you know, yeah. Like it's, yeah, this, this, this game, um, people don't understand how important that is. You know, um, besides Fourth and certain other people from the um, from the clan, um, I also follow Nipsey Hussle. You know what I mean? It's certain people right. in the game that they, they instill that. I think the problem is that um, when people realize how much time and how much money and how much hard work goes into being independent, they kind of shy away from it. So that's why they want to go to a label, you know what I mean? And they want the label to do everything. But then you're not on this stuff, you know, it's way different. Like, I, I chose not to do that route. I'd rather keep it to myself because I've never been, like, I'm, I'm not in this for, like, fame and popularity. I'm in it straight for the, strictly for the music, you know what I mean? Right. Right, so I think I was introduced you to a very weird circumstance, probably during the time Fat Caesar or Lachi Osage at the time was recording Fat Caesar. But also, I heard... He was jacked by G Easy. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, bro. You know, you know what's crazy about that? At the time, um, but last was old. He was actually one of the first people to point it out to me. I, I didn't really know about the record. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a uh, Monica Lewinsky. He oh yeah, much, yeah, yeah. He took the same title. It's like the very similar cadence. He just like changed the beat. At the time, I was pissed. You know what I mean? But then, yeah, like, he was. I, I was pissed. I was going in. <laughs> but you know what's crazy? Like when I look at his career now and I see like, you know, what he did recently with the record with Cardi, which yeah. is pretty much a remake of G um Juicy J's joint. I'm like, maybe this is just part of his his thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> even though this this is not the first time where established artists steal records from artists that are on a come up. So how you feel what would you do about that situation? I, the main thing I try to do is is do it through law first. You know what I mean? Like, cause, yeah. you know, I, I try to tell artists, make sure all your shit is copywritten, all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only bad thing about what happened with my record is that he, he tweaked it enough to where it, it wasn't a case. It was no case. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, it, yeah. He, changed, he changed everything around to where it's kind of like coincidence. Mm. So that that's why it sucked for me. You know what I mean? It'd be different like if he took the if like uh part of the hook was the same words or like the beat was the same, you know what I mean? Like it it was it was changed enough to where they get to say, Oh, it's just a coincidence, you know what I mean? He didn't take it from me. Right. So you just that. so you just signed a deal, you just announced that you signed a deal with E one. So tell me about how that situation came about. Um, actually my partner Rasun, um, he was already working with them for i think he's been working for them with them for the past year um we put out uh rest in peace to sean price sean price last album um my partner worked with him on that and right. fourth had like two two beats on that um so he'd been working with i think that was probably the first project he put out and then i was on a compilation album we did um through e1 i had one joint on there with fourth and then um peter crack just um did an ep with them so 
you know what I mean? It's pretty much through his connection. I mean, I've worked with E1 in the past. Like when I first signed in 09, it was Koch. Actually, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so I already had history with them. And um, it's the same type of situation. I'm not signed directly to them. It's just a straight partnership. Like, it's, it's, a, it's distribution. Yeah, distribution. Yep. So, you know, it's pretty much match, you know, like whatever promo I do. You know, they'll, they they follow what I'm doing and they'll match me. You know what I mean? Like match for match, you know. Like you do this, we'll do that. It was kind of like a 50-50 thing, you know. Word, word. Um, so you've been in the industry for a while. You've seen many, many contracts. Recently, Lil Pump just dropped out of his deal for nesting the company of millions. <laughs> just a sign. <laughs> uh, with the same company <laughs> for eight million. So that was genius. <laughs> you say you know what kind of deal that is. I would like to know what the fuck kind of deal is that. Uh, you know what? Um, I think with him, it, I think it works. It's, it works good for both. It works good for him and for the um for Warner for both parties. Yeah. Um, the type of deal I think he has, like I have, I didn't read his contract, but nine times out of ten, it's probably a um, it's a three sixty. It's definitely a three sixty. But I think they're anticipating his ceiling, you know, because he's he's real big on social media. So I guess any yeah, I, I mean you you know how it is nowadays. It's pretty much like I would say artists like him, Takashi. I would say they're more you not like YouTube people, but you know how you have like those YouTube well, people that it, are pretty I, I, popular. G vids and shit like that. Bro. Yeah, yeah. I think that like the 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 trolling and shit they do is kind of like first. They kind of like trolls that actually happen to rap you know what i mean so right. they have a lot of ceiling when it comes to um promotion and marketing because they could they could get a lot of free publicity yeah you know I, I, mean? I already me and lachi already talked about it. that nigga that'll be doing the fucking hennessy fucking um recipe and shit. <laughs> <laughs> i'm waiting for this nigga's rap album to come out yeah he might as well drop one he got the buzz right now i mean that's right now that's like the game plan it's kind of like um the kid, the Bunt kid did that. Bunt, whatever. Uh, he, he was doing all the, the pranks, the pranks, the pranks. And then once he I, got his fan base up, he's like, oh, by the way, I rap. I'm like, damn, that's genius. <laughs> yeah. And majority of the people who rap, who do the pranks and shit like that can't rap for worth shit. But, you know. No, nah. And that's the thing, like, to, just to go into that real quick with these young kids. My thing is... Uh, I'm not one of those dudes that I just like bash, you know, the young artists. There's, there's certain things I do like. Yeah. My thing is just, I, if you can't, I, I just hate when uh, I hear a song and they, they can't articulate themselves and they can't put words together. That That's what yeah. frustrates me. You that's know what I mean? My, like, I, you feel the same way, huh? That's my issue at this point. It just seems like people, the barriers of entry of hip hop is too fucking easy. Yes. It's getting to being that we talked about the fact of SoundCloud and all the other stuff and, the, and how easy it is to access a computer and, you know, probably crack some fucking software and be able to record things like it's it's too easy at this point. And people don't have the most to me. I feel like people only think the only way out of like, you know, poverty is being a rapper and being, yeah. a, you know, an athlete. And to be honest, we, this is the reason why we don't have people of our representation in different fields that we need the representation in because we are so stuck on the quick money Absolutely. as opposed as opposed to helping our community as opposed to all that you know me on the other hand if i was saying this bullshit and I, all i want to do is music is because music's my passion but majority of these motherfuckers music is not really their passion because they really don't care about the damn craft itself and that's nope. that that's been my thing about that whole situation in terms of like these these troll rappers and most other stuff it's a thing that's going to be hot right now but it's going to get to a point where people are going to be like damn i'm tired of looking like i'm stupid exactly. i i hope i hope it gets to that point because <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie another thing will come into another thing and make you look stupid in other ways at the end of the day like you know this can make you look stupid then something else will come out out, out, out and make you look stupid so it's kind of it's it's a different situation but yeah back to this uh when you try to when you look into a record contract what's the thing that benefits you like what do you try to look for in a record contract uh first thing is on uh, creative control mm -hmm. i think that's very important um and then I'm just not signing on 360. I feel yeah. like if if the music, if the the music, that's cool. You know, the splits on the music, 
you know, even if it shows to where like if you're, if you're with a company that's going to get you big shows, they're going to get you in front of a big crowd, a crowd that you might not be able to draw on your own right away, then yeah, they might be entitled to a split. But once it comes to like endorsements and all that extra shit, like I feel like that's mine. Like, you shouldn't have a piece of that. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I'm you. I get that off my likeness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like then you, they, 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 I understand now because you know uh, with streaming and everything, you know the artists ain't making as much money as they used to. No. So the labels are like, yo, we got to get our bread any way we could. So if you got a a Nike deal, we want a piece. If you got this deal, we want a piece. If you got that deal, we want a piece. I'm cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So cool. now you're from Bayonne. If it wasn't for you and Louis, Louis Ave, shout out to Louis Ave. Um, I would have known there's a fucking scene out there at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so now, you know, mo- um, just recently the Ruffle Feathers podcast released a top 10 list and people were upset as fuck, man. Like, uh, you know. <sighs> Do you think it's time? Do you think it's really time to have a list out right now for these guys? Because I, I really don't see enough material. I, I think it was premature. Um, I, I think I don't. I mean, I'm supposed to be doing an interview with them, hopefully yeah. soon, so maybe they can no, elaborate. There, there's you know? no shade. There's no shade on them. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying, no, yeah. I'm I, just I think, asking yeah, a question here. <laughs> I just, I just want to know what the premise was with behind the list because, um, are they just taking from? You know, they listen to music and then they're picking like what songs they like the most. Are they looking at uh, what you've done in a game? How long you've been doing it? Longevity? I don't know what the list was based off of. You know, like, so that I, um, I, I, like, I, I was you. looking at the uh, list and I was like, you know, I only learned, heard one Ali Mo and Jay Ransom record, and that's mm-hmm. only the record with you and Louie on with it. With me and Lou, yeah. And like the only like person I know from like Bayonne that I actually really fucks with, of course, is Cheech. You, Louie, and Peso is a fucking sleeper. If he had more material out, I would have been like, he should be on that list, but I don't think he should be on that list. He doesn't have enough material. Not enough, nah. Yeah. So it, it was just the most weirdest thing. So I know this is a there's a major scene coming out of Bayonne. And um shit, man. I want I wanna see that shit progress. I know that you're you're at the forefront of it. You're like the gatekeeper. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's what they said. <laughs> You're most definitely afraid of winning the cut. <laughs> <laughs> but you no, nah, it is it is moving um and people are starting to get known. Um you got um Bang I don't know if you heard of Bank Road Bugs, but um No. He got a song with Jay Critch, who signed with Richard Kidd. Like he got a couple records with, with some big artists. He's moving. He's more of like a drill trap rapper though. Yeah. Um my dude, my dude TG, he just got the project. He works with um Lil Dev's camp. He's part of Lil Dev's camp. Um, I, heard, he, I, heard, I heard a little Dev man. He, he yeah, did, he did a show with Niz about in that SOBs a couple of, uh like about a year and a half ago. Okay, yeah, his 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 fan base is solid, bro. I, I seen yeah. the show recently, and like the whole crowd knew knew all the words to the songs. I was like, that's that's impressive. That, mm-hmm. That's what it's supposed to be, man. That's that's what you try to strive for as a performer and, and, and an artist, all all in one. Like to have people listen to your music, memorize your music, come to your shows, and just you ain't got to perform. They'll just do the nope. shit for you. That's that, perfect. Bro. That's 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 living the dream at this point. Yeah, I, and I'm waiting for a lot of these rappers out here to really like understand that there's really more to this shit than just releasing music and all the other stuff. You gotta really put yourself out there. So yeah. we're gonna get into this next question. One of the things that we've talked about actually some time ago is that you really wanted to leave rap alone a little bit and start bringing yeah. up the Bayonne scene. And you believe he now seems like you're not done with rap anytime soon. Do you think you can juggle both? You know I could. I mean? Um I'm at that point right now. Um I got I got some things planned I can't really talk about. But um yeah. I feel like with me, um, I've been doing it for so long and me being independent and traveling and learning the, the actual business side. When you talk to a lot of these young artists, you realize like how ignorant they are um business wise with the industry they know literally nothing they don't like some of them don't even have their names copyrighted like they'll just make up a name and then they'll say oh i'm signed to i'm signed to ass white records and i'm like what is like they just make shit up you know what i mean so, it's, it's no it's no mind they they can't monetize it you know what i mean so i think that 
I've been doing it long enough to you, where you need to copyright ass white records so no one can shit. Somebody gonna take that. <laughs> so, good idea. <laughs> Word, man. But yeah, I, I feel like um it's 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 coming to that time to where like maybe um my road is not like like I said, I'm past that whole trying to get signed and trying to be on and all you know what I mean. Like I've I've done enough, you know, I feel. Um I, I wanna help a lot of these young artists. I do. Yeah, man. I feel there's more to this game than just rapping. There's always like the A and R. Like sometimes you just gotta look from afar and be like, "Damn, do I like how the scene is? Period, and just music, hip hop in general. Exactly. Is, there, is there a way that we, that I as a person who has that ear, who has that that know how to be like, I'm gonna help this person get on. I'm gonna help this person, you know, get to where he needs to be. I'm gonna give him the necessary tools and steps and where he needs to like, you know." what's his next move going to be that's what it's supposed to be that's what sometimes some people who've done rapping like i've tried <laughs> <That's> <laughs> how, like you know but to me to this day i still write records so i can understand why the hell an artist goes through um periods of like writer's block because mm -hmm. you gotta understand i don't like it when um these fucking industry guys tell you that you need to do this you need to do that and they never wrote a record in their fucking life I'm and telling never, you that. And, and, and that shit be pissing me off. I'm like, this is why, you know, the record industry's trash to this day. They don't really put nothing behind anything. And that's why I'm like, that's why I write records every now and then to be like, all right. I think you, myself. you're right. If you, even if you look at the game right now, the the people that are making the most moves, I'm talking like behind the scenes, they do have knowledge about either being the artist or they're just so close to the artist, they understand. And what I mean by that is people like like Top Dog with TDE, what he's doing oh with TDE, uh, Coach K. Like, mm -hmm. these are the people that should be running the game. Not some fucking 60-year-old dude that don't know shit about, you know what I mean? Like, these, and you can see it. Like, these people that know what they're doing, you can see yeah. the, the strides. And uh, you know what I mean? Like, look at what TDE's doing. A lot of people don't even understand that TDE for the most part is an independent and they're operating like they're a major label you know what I'm saying? yeah like, you know it's so crazy i was reading up on like an, on an interview that freddie gibbs no actually not freddie gibbs freddie gibbs manager lambo actually had with um i think it was hot new hip-hop and he was talking about they went to a bunch of labels because freddie gibbs makes a lot of money for a nigga that's fucking um oh yeah in the, in the <laughs> And just yeah. to come off of a, a major case and all the other stuff, like a lot of people just just ask, like, yo, how do y'all do it? How you get all these shows? How you get all of this? And they must have told them something. They just was baffled as fuck. They didn't know what to fucking do. So it's just like, yo, like these major labels are still stuck in their old ways of doing shit, and they don't understand. They're they gonna be nixed out very soon. Yo, they they don't like artists like Freddie Gibbs because they can look at him and see, like, yo, Freddie is not he's not on the radio he's not really visible like say a, a major artist but yeah. he's making five six seven times more money than our biggest artist and they can't figure out why you know that's, what I mean? that's why i'm so iffy on the fact that nipsey hustle signed the deal you know like i'm just like yo you you had that proud pay shit going on you had all that shit going on i'm like you don't you didn't really need a record deal he, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know his situation either. Um, he says it's a partnership, but mm. honestly, everything he did, like when you watch his rollout, he could have did all that shit by himself too. Like, he really could have. Yeah, I don't see nothing spectacular where I'm like, ah, oh, well, he could have got because it wasn't like he was on radio or nothing. Like he could have literally did all that without anybody. You know what I mean? Exactly. I really wasn't like. I just felt like, yo, I think you could have done that all on your own. I know a lot of these people, like, you know, Title did a documentary with them. Like, they would have done that shit off GP. Like, that shit wasn't... Hell yeah, he got his connections are strong enough to where... He could have got he... that on his own. Yeah, yeah. But um, also, you got, you know, Carter, Block Bang, you know, you're doing records with Louis Yav, man. Like, what what is it about these guys that you, you love doing records with these guys? Yo, uh, Lou, well, Louis, Louis just a workaholic, bro. Like, yeah, he I is. haven't met, yeah, he's one of the only artists I've met. Like, Louis would do a project, I'll be in the studio with him, and he'll be like, yo, I'm finishing up my album, and then I got another album. And I got like two more in the tuck, and I'm like, damn, nigga, what the fuck? Like, he just, he's like a work of all he, 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 he gonna be currency, watch. Yeah, yo, that, that's what I see. I, I see that little 
six song EPs, you know, drop like four or five of them a year, you know, and, and just, and just make, and I, you know what I like about Louis? A, a good thing about putting out a lot of music is that it, it gives you time to find your sound. And yeah. I think if you listen to Louis from 2013, 14 to now, yeah. um, I think he found the sound like, um, what's that year, like the yeah, yeah, like all those records, I think that's kind of like his pocket but, right you there. No, but that Flood Life shit is just like, one of his most amazing oh, records yeah. out right now. Like, I, I feel like when I heard that record, I was like, damn, man. Yeah. I was, I'm feeling. I was feeling that record super hard, man. That, that no homo, but um, <laughs> <laughs> he he, uh, he he challenges himself, yo. Like he he really does. He takes it serious. That's that's why I fuck with him. That's why that's why I fuck with him too. It's just that you know we we, we barely got get a chance to talk about certain things. I've tried challenging him as well in terms of using certain production. Like I said, yo, take this magnet beat and do something with it. Like yeah, I'll, I'll be like, yeah, I'll, and then he'd be like, all right, I'll take it. And he did something. He did the um, I forgot what it's called, but I know it's on um, Bandcamp. Bandcamp, okay. But I know it's a it was a it was a off the it was like a a hit and cut off the um, Freddie Gibbs and Madlib project that nice. you know, oh, didn't that, make, didn't make, that didn't make it. So I gave him a beat from that, and he he, he did a great song off of that. Um, so after this EP, what's oh, next? What's I'm what's coming, what's, I'm what's coming next? I'm coming back to back. I'm, I'm not like, that's the thing. This EP is pretty much setting up like a lot what I have in store. So um, is there going to be like a full length project between you and Forbes? I mean, is- we, we got, we got a bunch, we got enough records for a full length project. Um, mm-hmm. Like I think the EP is kind of like, we just going to put this out there and then see what it does. See the reception. Yeah. You know what? Y'all might have to take the Freddie Gibbs and Mad Lib route. Remember like there was like three different EPs that came out of just records they were doing together. And then they was like, all right, we announced them. There's a project coming out. Well, yep. co- cocaine piata or whatever. And then it finally came out. <laughs> <laughs> and the way yo fourth the way fourth works is crazy like he'll fourth is one of them dudes i never i never seen a producer like this yeah, yeah. i could literally go in the studio right and yeah. say say like um say i want a certain beat i could take like a beat that's not hit like a, a regular beat whatever instrumental whatever record it and then strip the beat, send him the acapella, and he'll build a, a beat, a completely new beat around my vocals. Like, that dude is ridiculous. He's that, like a scientist that, for that that's, shit. That's a producer. Yeah, he's a producer, bro. Hey, he's not... Fourth is like one of them dudes, like, I'm not emailing you beats. Like, you're going to sit down with me and we're going to make a record. Like, <laughs> that's, a, that's a producer. Like, yeah. I'm like, don't get it fucked up, people. I'm tired of these damn arguments I be having with people about between a beat maker and a producer. A beat maker makes beats and they sell them on the internet and they just give them out to you. A yep. producer is somebody who sits down with you and actually tries to understand who you are as a person and an artist and tries to curve something to your sound. And, you know, yeah, y'all gotta get that. Got get that little definition. Gotta get it right. Like, yep. make sure, make sure, <laughs> make sure you understand this shit. So, so, and it's super soulful. Like this project, um, it's like you said with what you what you tried to do with Louis with the Madler. Like, I, I think he purposely channeled. Like when you like some of the beats on here don't even have drums in it. Like it's so weird and experimental, but it's still, like. And we purposely did it like that. You know what I mean? Like we purposely, I wanted to challenge myself. I didn't want to just get um, a beat that was going to be easy to make a hit. You know what I mean? Like like 808s and something catchy to where as soon as you hear it, you know it's a hit. Like I wanted to be a little awkward and, and unorthodox. You see what I'm saying? Like just to challenge myself. Word. So so you might have another, might have a full length for four, Seven Disciple. Will you also delve more into other styles of hip-hop i know you're very versatile you don't you do you've done party records before oh, so, yeah. so you know are you still gonna delve back into you know prince of the city biz or you're gonna you're gonna evolve more i mean well i'm done with yeah i'm done with that i'm evolve. yeah i, I, I honestly yo i want to get into more like spacey shit more spacey shit and then i do want to use my voice like a lot of the engineers that i work with they tell me they like yo you got a voice but you don't use it you know what i mean like all right we get that you can spit but you can do the whole like that whole nate dog lane with the melodic hooks and all that you should do that more you know what i mean so um i do want to get more into that um more soul samples like just i just want to evolve as an artist you know what i mean 
So who are you very inspired by musically right now in hip hop? In the game now? Yeah. Um shit. Yo, honestly, bro, the R and B artists inspired me more than the rap. Th- that's sad as shit. That's how I feel too. <laughs> yo, I, li- I yo, I listen, um, what's Shorty named her? The the chick her, yeah, she took, yeah. yo, I just heard something on the radio the other day from her. I'm like, this shit is good. Like her, black. Black. Um the um what's the other dude? Oh, um Division. Division is dope. Yeah, he's pretty good. Um What's the other artist? Um, give me, give me a name. I can't think of the name. Damn. The name of um, what's that R&B artist, man? I can't think of his name. He's I don't really know. I, I don't know every R&B artist. All, all I think about is I have Weekend, Thundercat, yeah, fucking, th- yeah, uh, Thundercat. Uh, this new guy I just heard just recently called R and Ray. He has dropped this album called Platinum Fire. That shit is fucking amazing. I'm gonna check uh, that out. Um, oh, Brent, Brent Fires is dope too. Who? That's on the, um, he's on the, he's singing the hook on the crew joint. Oh, okay. He, the the crew joint by um Gold Link. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, that dude. His name, his name is Brent Fires. He's from Baltimore. He's he's really dope. R and B dude. Yeah yeah. Man. They uh, them dudes are talented, man. And, yo, and the crazy thing is they can actually rap. Like I heard Black on the radio freestyling. I'm like, yo, he rap better than all the rappers out. It's crazy. Yeah, he do. Like um. Yo, man. Like, also, like the thing about Goldwing, I've been like a huge Goldwing fan for years, and like that nigga just has yeah. it. That nigga's trajectory went the fuck up with that crew record. Yo, he's out of there right now. He's so I, and that's what I like. I like um, they, they kind of like contemporary. I don't know what really contemporary. I, I don't even know what genre to put it in, but it's that's it, I, I it's, like. It's that. all, I, I think they call it alternatives or some shit like mm-hmm. that. I like it. I, I think. I think that all artists should um evolve, man. I mean, you know, if you you can listen to my old shit. You know what I mean? Like I, I get certain things, you know, because you know how fans are. Yeah. Like they'll hear something and they'll be like, "Oh, why don't you make another drop it down record? Why don't you make another club? Or why don't you do like Aaliyah? Or why don't you do this?" And I'm like, I, "You can listen to that. Go, I'm, to that. I'm past. <laughs> I'm, I'm past, past that it. shit." Yeah, like I'm trying to, you know, I, I'm constantly trying to challenge myself to, to do more things as an artist. I'm a real artist. I'm not in this for no clout and none of that shit like that. So right. I'm not chasing no sound. Like when I work on a project, every time I work on a project, I can't listen to anything. I don't listen to nothing. That's the same thing for Louis too. He's like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. People be like, yo, what you think about this? I'm like, I ain't hear it, yo. I'll, I'll I'm not. To that. When my project wrapped up, I'll listen to some shit. I say, yo, my fucking um, Clinton was like hitting Clinton LG hit me. He was like, yo, man, you got that two chain? I'm like, motherfucker, I can't give you that shit now. That shit's fucking old as hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. That, that link on the internet ain't there no more. You need to get that damn streaming service. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Yeah, you got to catch up with it, man. This shit moves so fast nowadays. Shit. But, yo, this is the time for you to plug in your social media, your project, where you can go to copy it and pre order it. So, go away, yes, man. Sir. Yo, Against the Grain EP, Biz the Prince, Fourth Disciple, pre-order is on iTunes, Amazon, and Google Play. It don't matter which one. Go there and support. Um, the Google Play is for Android. iTunes is for um, Apple, of course. Amazon. Um, just follow me on Instagram, Biz the Prince, B-I-Z-Z, the Prince, 1-8. Um, same thing on Twitter. Same thing on SoundCloud. You know what I mean? It's all the same. And um, also, the pre-order is five ninety nine, so you better fucking cop that yeah, shit. Yeah, you I, better cop that. I, I, cop, I cop my pre-order. I was like, oh, I got money. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, that, like, fuck it, man. It's yeah, like, we try to, fuck. yeah, we support, try to the, make support it. the indie, support the indie. Absolutely, man. yeah, exactly, man. We try to, and that that's me as an artist. I try to do things um, that's fan friendly. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna bang you over the head. And plus, we I got a lot of things coming with this project too. Like we got some giveaways we're gonna do. Um, we're putting together a release party, of course. You know what yep. I mean? Um, I got a bunch of interviews set up, and it's gonna be a good run, man. It's gonna be a good run. Yep. So yeah, before I, before we close out the show, I'm just gonna make a little announcement. Uh, 420, third year anniversary of Break a Leg. I will be spinning records, Gem Radio. We're powering the whole fucking show out. It's gonna be nothing but dope instrumentals. Hip hop, R and B, all underground. It's gonna be a dope fucking show. I can't wait to fucking do this shit. I've been waiting on this for a very long time. This is pretty much for y'all to see 
how a live gym radio show will be in the near future, which will be coming very soon. Because there's no more gym shows. I'm not doing that no more. I'm making gym radio the brand for artists and myself. So that's, that's what it's gonna be. That's it. But yo, thank you so much, Biz Man, for being on the show. You're the first guest of 2018. Ah, <laughs> yes, let's get it. <laughs> I appreciate you, bro. Always, man. Always yeah. supporting, man. I was Always like, yo, how, how how am I going to get this man on one of my damn podcasts? I had to figure <laughs> something. I had to figure. Was like, you got to have a project coming out. Yo, soon. so it was perfect timing, man. So I'm like, yo, I got a project coming. You like? I was like, I, I, you t- it's, it's time now. <laughs> Facts. Yeah, Facts, man. Yeah. But yo, man, it's good speaking to you as always, man. So yo, we're gonna close out the show. This is Gem Radio episode 23. Can't wait to drop this episode. This shit is a classic already. I already like this interview. So absolutely. <laughs> so, I, I, so I hope y'all enjoyed this episode and we'll see you next time. Peace. Now it's a celebration I've been impatiently waiting for my chance in it 50-50 partnership, full advance with it